So at the end of class, last time I was sort of working over a MATLAB example to reproduce these type of plots, and uh, we kind of ran to the end of class and didn't quite get a chance to uh, finish it. Um, so again, these are plots on a, that lower hemisphere projection. So these represent uh, the concentric the concentric lines represent um, the concentric lines represent angles. So that's 30 degrees deviation, 60 degrees deviation, 90 degrees deviation, or horizontal well, um, and then of course the angles around uh, this way represent, you know, this is north, east, south, west. So you get a full field visualization of the required, in this case the required compressive strength of the rock, uh, such that you won't see any breakouts at all, okay? Again, so this can't be used, it's, this is a very conservative estimate for wellbore stability, right? Because we, uh, for, we don't, say that a stable wellbore is one with zero breakouts, it's one with some minimum acceptable breakouts that won't lead to a washout. So, uh, but this, this uh, gives us some idea of sort of the things to look out for and, uh, or the directions to look out for, if you will, while you're drilling. Anyway, um, so I, I got, you know, I sort of live coded the whole thing. And I got to the end, and I just didn't basically have a chance to run the code. Uh, <coughs> and I w so I went back to my office, and there were, like, like any time anybody writes code, there were a few typos here and there I had to create, correct to get it to run. But the structure of the code is unchanged from what I talked about in class. So I didn't, I didn't rethink the logic in any way or change anything like that. So if you go back and watch the last video, you know, the structure of the code is correct. Right? But there may be a little bug here and there in the, in the typo or indexing into an array or something like that, okay? Uh, and so with that, then, then we can run. Uh, so, you know, I, I have a, I created this, you know, function create lower hemisphere plot, which takes in the stress tensor uh, in terms of uh, the principal stresses, the geographic angles, Poisson ratio, um, internal friction, pore pressure, mud weight, and then this last parameter is just uh, a parameter that I, I actually added this later. I think initially I had these lens spaces go just from minus one to one in, in terms of 50, and, and here it was 50, and so I just added an additional parameter in that allows me to increase the resolution of the plot, and this is this brings up another point. So in this case, I just made it 25. In other words, the bigger that number, and I'll show you, the bigger that number, um, the more resolution the plot will have. So there's my plot, and in this case, uh, it's the uh, it's meant to mimic this scenario. Okay, now, I don't know the exact angle there, so I just guessed it's something like 50 degrees. Um, <coughs> but uh, you can see the structure is similar, right? And as I get to a higher resolution, you'll see it, it, it's much better. Um, some of you may wonder, and th this brings up another point, you know, some of you may wonder why I tend to always code everything in functions, whereas you guys probably used to just write a, a script, you know, that spout starts at the top and, and ends at the bottom. And I, I tend to code in, in all these little functions. And I've already talked about, you know, from a best practices standpoint, it, it allows you to you basically write these little functions and then helps you out in the debugging process to know, you know, the smaller functions and you know exactly, you know, where your errors are if you have an error in the debugging and also it, it allows you to, to verify your code easier because you can verify each of those functions individually. Verify meaning, when I say verify, I mean you're comparing the result of your code against some known answer, right? That known answer could come from the book, from my notes, from something you can compute by hand, from something you compute in Excel, right? It's a way to verify that your code is doing what you expect it to do. And it's easier to do that if you verify all these little functions individually, of course, okay? So, but even in the end, this is sort of my main script is to write, to, to create this plot. Uh, but I still wrote it in a functional way uh, that I 
I call it with arguments like this as a function. And the reason is, uh, you know, it gives me a way to quickly change the inputs, right? I can, I can change these numbers quickly. Uh, I can run different scenarios. And in this case, the, the one I'll demonstrate to you is this last one. And the reason I added it is because as you saw, oh, and by the way, you can ignore the error. It's just, uh, you know, I'm sweeping over an array of points. Uh, and when I did that, I, I, I swept over the same point twice. So I, I, re I computed the same point twice. And then when I went to interpolate using grid data, it just complained about that. It's just saying there's two points in the same spot, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eliminate one of them and average the values. But the average value of the number should be the same. Right? It should be the values are the same, so the average of them will be the same. So anyway, um, just the last point, you know, uh, this is fairly crude plot, but it, but it runs quickly, right? So, you know, in, in my debugging process, I don't want to wait even 10 seconds for my code to run. I want it to just pop up an answer basically immediately, and that's that's what it does here. But I can get a much, you know, nicer resolution plot, say if I change the 25 to 125. And so what that number is, it's the number of discrete points that I'm sweeping, right? Uh, in this direction and radially. So in, in with 25, I'm just taking 25 points along the radius and 25 points this way. And so the contour plot is kind of crude. So now I've taken 125 points this way and 125 points along each radius. And it's still running, right? Uh, but there, it's done. And now it's a night, you know, less crude plot. Well, remember, this is not a well bore. This is a geographic location. And so what this says is that in these regions, right, here, so you, you learn, learn how to read this, right? What that means is that this is roughly in that sort of 60 degree circle, right? So if I'm de drilling 60 degrees deviated in the direction of SH max, which is like that direction, right? or you know, 50 degrees from north. If I'm drilling at 60 degrees deviation, 50 degrees from north or south, then in these areas, there's more likelihood of breakouts because it requires a higher rock strength to, to exhibit no breakouts. Right? So in other words, you know, the way to sort of look at this is the blue colors are safe areas, right? areas that are going to have more stable well bores. And, and the yellow areas are areas that are going to have less stable well bores. Right? And so if it's an option, don't drill in the yellow areas. right? If it's not an option, then you just have to take that into consideration in your, in your, you know, in, in your, your casing, in, in your, in your casing design and your uh, considerations for mud weight and other things. Um, it, this is this is for a given. This is a, this is, calculation is for a given mud weight and pore pressure. Yeah, so it's not it's not point wise in the sense that. I mean, this, this is a geographic, spatial right area and an array of deviations. But but yeah, it is. I mean, this is in this case it's a balance. It's a perfectly balanced scenario. So in, in fact, it doesn't matter in the sense that it's balanced. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Well, that's not true. It, it matters a little bit, but um, you know, it, it, since they're balanced, they they cancel out in most of the terms. It, it, the effective stress would be a little bit different. So, yeah. A particular set of drilling scenario, give, you know, depth, because you're you're talking about pore pressure and, and mud weight. Yeah. You could that be, that might be an interesting exercise there. That you could actually so make this a three-dimensional plot, right? Where you have this is just one slice at one depth corresponding to one pore pressure, and then and then you know you have different slices. Right? So you have multiple slices at multiple depths. 
you can see how it changes. The thing is, I don't think, I'm almost certain that, that you know, it, it, nothing's going to change with respect to the, the, the size of these sort of areas of danger, if you will, may change, but they're not going to relocate. In other words, they're not going to shift over here. Right. So it, it, it may shrink or grow corresponding to different pore pressures, but it's not going to relocate. It would, it would, uh, it should grow, I think, yeah, because the effect of stress is going to continue to grow. And otherwise, you know, as long as you remain balanced, you know, as you go down deeper, as long as you remain balanced, I don't think anything else would change, but, but it would grow a little bit. These are your areas of most likely breakouts, right? I mean, this, this. Oh, I, I see what your question: ver vertical versus horizontal. Yes, yeah, right, yeah, exactly, right? yeah, exactly. So it, you know, if you're drilling perfectly horizontal, it's you're you're okay. Yeah. So that I mean that's that that is sometimes an option, right? You can just deviate. <laughs> Uh, why is it probably has to do with the faulting regime that I, you know, I chose to, I chose to do this revol reverse faulting where the vertical stress was the highest, and that that because when you go horizontal, um, now your vertical stress is sort of one of the tangential principal stresses associated with it, and that can add some stability, if you will, to the wellbore. Um, and the reason I chose to look at that one uh, is just, just out of pure laziness. Because remember, I have to do rotations, right? From the, from the um, principal stresses into the geographic stresses. And in this one, it only required one rotation, right? Because the vertical stress is S3, and it's down already. So I, that just meant I had to do one rotation uh, the alpha angle, remember the alpha angle from north to here, which I said was 50 degrees, because I don't really know. It's, it's possible. So these figures that came from uh, a paper, and I, it's possible. I, so in the book, there, all the details aren't there, like exactly what that angle is and you know, exactly how it's oriented. It's possible you could go back to the original source of this figure in the papers, and it may have all the details. And then, then you can reproduce these figures exactly. So it's weird. Uh, it's weird that, that there's some sort of contour of that. The, the visualization here looks different than my screen. You, you actually see see this thing here that you don't see on my screen. And this brings up an important point. Uh, to stand on the soapbox for a second. Um, I don't know what version you have of MATLAB, but if you have an older version, uh, and this color scheme right here is called JET. It's the worst color scheme you can possibly choose. And it used to be the default of MATLAB. Thankfully, they changed it. Right? So notice, I have in 2015 here, notice that's a different color bar than that one. You could always change them. But this, this is really bad. So if you have an older version of MATLAB, that this is the default color, color scheme, you shouldn't use it. It's bad because it has a sort of non-uniform luminescence gradient. So in other words, if you were to change this to a grayscale, you know, given the same luminescence gradient, it should just go from light to dark. And you have this sort of bright area in the center of the color, color scheme that would cause you to see things and I think that's probably what's happening here. It's some function of, I'm seeing things that aren't really there in the plot, just visually. Uh, um, the, the, the numbers are off by like a factor of two, right? Uh, 
guess it, I guess it is. I, I looked at the, the contour. I didn't look at the. It, it's actually the opposite. Yeah. So, man, there there may be. I have to double check mine. There could be a, a typo, but but again, the structure the structure of the code is correct. Uh, there could be it could have a typo. Yeah. Although I wouldn't necessarily trust the book. <laughs> There's a lot of typos in the book. Uh, so anyway.